There are growing calls for Parliament to be recalled after six days of violence across the country. The Defence Secretary, John Healy, has been in Rotherham this morning where a hotel housing migrants was attacked. Well, Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer has called an emergency COBRA meeting today and vowed that those involved in the rioting will face the full force of the law. Well, joining us now is Home Secretary Yvette Kuma, who, Cooper. Good to speak to you this morning. Uh, Sir Keir Starmer and you have called out these horrific scenes that we've all been watching as far-right thuggery. Are you prepared, though, to call out those rioting as racist, as fascist, as Islamophobic? We've already heard that that particular term hasn't been used. In fact, we were speaking earlier uh, to Zara Sultana, MP. She said that it's wrong the government isn't using that. She thinks Islamophobia must be called out because that then allows people to understand what's behind this. Good morning, Kate. Well, what we've seen on the streets of some cities and towns over the weekend, frankly, is criminal violence and thuggery. That is what it is, uh, first and foremost, and that's why it needs the full force of the law behind it, why we've made clear to the police that they have our full backing in order to pursue uh, the full range of prosecutions, of penalties against those responsible and uh, we expect arrests have already taken place, we expect to see swift justice and penalties follow. You're right that there has been a range of different uh, things driving this, including far-right extremism. We have certainly seen some targeted attacks on mosques and that clearly reflects Islamophobia and people shouldn't be targeted for their faith or for the colour of their skin. We've also seen some looting, some uh, response of local criminals uh, just getting involved at the periphery in looting on uh, streets as well. Every single case, this is disgraceful behaviour. We have to tackle the, the criminality and the thuggery and the extremism wherever we find it. It needs to face the full force of the law because none of these people speak for Britain. It's been going on though, hasn't it, for now a week. And I think that's the fear. People just feel genuinely scared and they feel genuinely scared because of the colour of their skin and their faith. And there's a call for, for the government to own that, if you like, and say that rather than try and make it just about thuggery, even though we know that it's violent criminal thuggery. And I think that's uh, what I made clear in uh, in the points that I just made, that we obviously have seen this racist violence take place. We've seen the targeting on mosques. Mosques in particular, we have made sure that there is additional now protective security funding in place uh, for mosques that need it and that can be deployed uh, very urgently and rapidly to provide that additional support. But of course, the main response is coming from police forces to provide that support security in their response. But, but make no mistake, there has to be a reckoning for this. Everyone who is committing crimes and committing these vile crimes has to face the uh, penalties, has to face prosecution, uh, has to face the courts. And that's why we've also made sure that there are additional prosecutors in place, that there are additional courts ready and on standby, that we have the prison spaces in place. There needs to be people who thought they were going to be going off on holiday this weekend, who instead will face a knock on the door and an arrest and a police cell because of what they have done this weekend. Can I ask, um, because we've talked about this a few times in uh, the last uh, few days, like many of our viewers will have done at home uh, since those terrible killings in Southport, there have been identifiable individuals on social media who have been inciting not just riot, but violence. They've been using racist language. They've been using falsehoods about what happened in Southport. This is, uh, this is happening on the social media platforms what can be done, what should be done now by the social media companies and the police and the government to stop this happening? Because it's been happening for a week. Well, you're right, Ed, that we have seen these... Uh, the, uh, what things that are appearing online that are clearly criminal. That Social media has put rocket boosters under the far-right extremist organisation and also some of the violence that we have seen organising some of the violence. 
things that are criminal offline are also criminal online. So we also expect the police to be pursuing uh, criminality, illegal material that is online and to make sure that they also face the full force of the law. And there's also an issue about social media companies here. They have to take much greater responsibility for what is happening on their platforms that, frankly, they make huge amounts of money from and therefore they need to take much greater responsibility. We're going to be pursuing that with the social media companies this week as well. People who have been uh, condemning the, the riots um, but also criticising the government, I'm thinking here of Richard Tice, the new MP for reform. He said that he thinks that there is a two-tier approach to policing happening, that the government has been, um, or the police, have been softer or more cautious when it comes to policing the Gaza demonstrations, the events in Leeds, Hare Hill, um, a fortnight ago. But when it comes to these riots, they are being tougher, the language is tougher, that it's a different approach to policing. And that part of the grievance is that um, the police are not being equal in their approach. Does he have a point? Well, I think the first thing to say is that the police have to operate without fear or favour, whatever the kinds of crimes it is that they face. And I have been clear, the government has been clear to the government, wherever they find criminality, thuggery, violence and abuse and extremism, wherever it comes from, whatever the source, they have to take strong, firm action and they will have our full backing in doing so. It's really important that that takes place. It's why, for example, uh, you referred to Hare Hills. There have already been, I think West Yorkshire Police have told me there have been about 27 arrests and there are four people currently in custody with some of the most serious cases who are awaiting trial for those offences and we have to make sure that action is taken there. But I do also think people try and use this as an excuse. They try and use this as an excuse to somehow justify the disgraceful behaviour this weekend from criminals. There is no excuse whatsoever for throwing bricks at police officers. There's no excuse for whatsoever for trying to set light to a hotel when there were known to be people inside it at that time. This is extremely dangerous violence and it just doesn't speak for people of Britain. No, I think of right not. across the country there are people who are appalled by seeing those kinds of things. Absolutely. And in those other there have been people saying, this is not our town, we don't want this. There's two things, isn't there, Home Secretary? There's the immediate threat and danger and uh, of stopping it now. And on that, should we be using water cannons? Are there enough police to tackle it, to keep those safe that we saw terrify those poor police people, uh, men and women involved in this? But there's also the frightening thing that somehow there are people that don't feel they can be represented, that then become victims of far-right extremists whipping them up. And no one is going to forgive a government that doesn't tackle that because we don't ever want to see this again, do we? So, first issue you raise is about the making sure that there is a, a strong enough policing response. The, the police do have additional public order police, public order trained police that they can deploy who weren't deployed last weekend, although they did make additional resources available and they did move police officers around the country. For example, officers from West Yorkshire went to support those in South Yorkshire. Those are operational decisions for the police, but I have said very clearly to the police, I have asked them repeatedly, do they have enough public order trained police? Do they have enough uh, police on the ground? Do they have enough powers that they need? And I will continue to support them and to make sure that they have the police in place that they need in order to be able to keep streets safe. It's one of the reasons we also have made a commitment to increase neighbourhood policing, the police on the streets that we absolutely need to see more of. In terms of how that we counter some of the issues around uh, extremism, but also some of the grievance issues, I think we can just be really clear. There are lots of people in the country who want to debate important issues. That could be issues around crime. It could be issues around the NHS. It could be issues around immigration. A whole series of things where uh, policies need to change. And you know, a lot of people voted for change in the general election where we need to have not just a proper debate, but also change policies and change directions. We can discuss all of those things. But there's loads of people that have strong views about all those things and didn't pick up bricks and throw them at the police officers. And that's why I think it's really important to separate the important debates that we need to have about the future of our country and the kind of just thuggish, violent, damaging behaviour we saw this weekend. 
absolutely. I think everybody will be terrified at those scenes. Uh, good to speak to you this morning. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.